was the Australian many of us aspire to be. That's how John Howard described him today. Hello and welcome to this special presentation from Seven News. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to pay tribute to the crocodile hunter. We'll not only hear from some of his famous mates, but from you as well. Our internet site has been absolutely inundated with so many heartfelt messages. But first, how we'd all like to remember him, Steve Irwin, in action. Well, you're not this is an actual crocodile here. This is an actual crocodile. And when I look at the tongue, animation... Crikey, another couple of inches? And I reckon I would have had a squeaky voice. You're a naughty boy, Monty. I've been working with crocodiles all my life. And what I work on is they can strike so hard and fast from the water's edge that if you're within half their body length from the edge of the water, you're going to take a hit. And you wouldn't want to take a hit of a croc this size. Once they get over 10 feet, mate, they've got around 3,000 pounds per square inch in bone-crushing jaw pressure. Have a look at this bloke. This is aggro. 15 feet, 600 kilos of sheer bone-crunching terror. And he hates me. Have a look at those teeth. Huge, great, penetrating teeth designed to capture and kill big mammals. This bloke's name, woo, Monty. And he strikes straight at the camera. I love my crocs. They're the passion of my life. And every single one of them has got an individual personality. This is Mary. She loves her chickens. Maintaining any of the crocodile enclosures at my home to spray a zoo means a lot of problems. They're territorial and they mean business. Have a go at Agro. He hates it when I mow in there. He'll kill me or the mower. He doesn't care which one he gets. He's a grumpy croc. Hugely territorial. Mate, I nearly come unglued here. Trying to keep the mower up and Agro just launched hits and he's happy enough to kill the mower and go back into the water. We certainly saw them there. Steve Irwin was often asked about the risks and he said quite simply his love for Aussie wildlife came first. It was that passion which took him to the Great Barrier Reef. He was in shallow water off Port Douglas. Steve was snorkeling above a large black stingray when its tail lashed up and spiked him. Those who were there say there was nothing that could be done. Well, one of those who was there was his manager and mate, John Stanton. Today he gave a press conference which will long be remembered. You may have seen a little bit in the news, but we thought it worth playing much more. This is John Stanton in his own words. Steve came over the top of the ray and then the tail came up and spiked him here and he pulled it out and the next minute he's gone. I can't, I can't, I can't come to grips with it yet. Um, I just have an image of him on the back of the boat. I can't get it. We sat together in the early hours, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock, having a cup of tea. And he just was in such a good frame of mind. You know, it was like there was nothing, no problems, no. Nothing to worry about. He was as happy as I've ever seen him. And that was the sad thing about him. I used to organise all these press things. And... I, I used to... I used to force it. No, I have to say this. I used to force him into doing interviews like this and say, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. And he'd say, John, why do I have to do these things? Why do I have to talk to these people? Why? I'd say, you have to do it. You've got to do it. This is, this is what's got to happen. And he'd listen. We had a great relationship. And I feel I've done it to him for 15 years. I should do it now. Yeah, his very dear mate John Stanton there speaking today in Cairns. Now, as we go to air tonight, people continue to leave floral tributes at Steve's Australia Zoo on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. Many of his closest friends have also gathered there, among them Peter Lang, who joins us now. Peter, what type of man was Steve? Hi, Koshi. Hi, Mel. Uh, I'm used to seeing you in the morning to, to stand here and talk to you tonight. Two days ago, I would never dream about it. He was a wonderful man. Uh, the, the qualities, if you take the successful business that Australia Zoo is away today, 
And if the world stops calling Steve's name, as they are doing today in tens of thousands, uh, there's a, a beautiful wife who's lost her husband and, and kids who lost dad the day after Father's Day, and uh, today that's it. Um, Stephen had a quality. I, when your children come into the world and they look at you with those beautiful innocent eyes and look straight through you at times, and kids love you unconditionally and give unconditionally, Stephen never lost that quality. Uh, you're a mate for Steve for life. He would come over your shoulder and he'd be the first one to put somebody in their place to look after a mate. Um, it's a gift that not many of us carry through our, our life and it's a rare gift and he never lost that. Uh, I saw Steve as a, a single man as many of his mates have in the late 80s, rambunctious and a real knockabout larrikin guy. There's a bit of Steve in all, every Australian male. And then I saw Steve soften and I saw the love of his life come in with, with Terry, as many of us did. And then I saw him blossom as a man with two beautiful kids. And uh, I've, I've lost a mate we all have. Peter, you, you mentioned Steve's family and, and we know that they were incredible and they were all very, very close. And of course, they, our hearts are breaking for them tonight. From what you know, do you think they will carry on the business? I think we all have to. Uh, I, I have enormous respect for Terry. She's a, she's a, a very dignified and, and a very strong-willed lady, and uh, she has that same passion that Steve has, and we all have. Ten years ago, this place had 20 employees. In uh, 1970, there's Steve and his family here. There's now more than 500 of us who, who come to work in a place where you think every day you can do something with your life and you can actually make a difference. You work with great people. Um, and it's just uh, su such a shock and loss. But what we want to do is we want to pick up where Stephen's left off. He's left a great footprint in the world and he's given us a, a job to do. We, we want to carry on that work. And uh, if anyone's asking what they can do, come and visit the do see the, gr the great work that he's done. And uh, we've got a job to do. We, we want to finish that. Steve's got uh, a wildlife foundation that uh, through the love of his family, he set up and Stephen Terry we're with and that's uh, wildlife warriors worldwide. The ANZ Bank have jumped on board with this today uh, and it's the Steve Irwin fund that's going in there. If you could make a contribution, if, uh, if people could help us out, that's how we'll keep going. Okay. Peter Ling, thank you very much for joining us on a, on a very sad day. Appreciate it. Thanks, Koshi. Thanks, Mel. Well, coming up tonight, we return to the site of Steve's accident. And we have footage from Steve's own archives. I've had some wildlife encounters in my life, but the emotions that I felt in my heart, I was nearly crying to get this close and be loved on by this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous mummy orang was such a touching experience, one that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Everyone seems to have a favourite memory of Steve Irwin. One of my favourites was when he decided to train with the Brisbane Broncos. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Smash? Alright mate, here we go. That was bloody good technique, I tell you. Come on, big boy. I wish I had a guy on the five now. What? Oh. <laughs> but as much as Steve Irwin loved a laugh, he was a serious and thoughtful individual. If there's one thing that I, Steve Irwin, would want to be remembered for, it's be remembered for passion and enthusiasm. Conservation is my job, my life, my whole persona. And for that, he will be remembered. Steve was in fact shooting a scene for his daughter Bindi's new TV show when he was killed. No doubt it was a freak accident. Stingray attacks are extremely rare. Yeah, just hours ago, our Monique Ryan travelled to the very spot where Steve was filming. Monique, what can you tell us about the place? 
It's breathtakingly beautiful, but it's also very, very remote. Now, we headed out to Bats uh, Reef today with renowned underwater documentary filmmaker Ben Crop and his son Dean Crop, who is a Channel 7 cameraman. Now, in their words, they've been out to this reef more times than they can remember. To them, this is their backyard. So we headed out with them today to the reef exactly 24 hours after Steve was killed there. We headed off from Port Douglas. So we're just coming into the reef now? Yes, this is Bat Reef just over here and then we're going to go straight in over the past the reef in on the sandy flat where it's very shallow. That's where the rays are. Ben, it's absolutely beautiful out here. It's so hard to imagine that something so terrible could happen. Uh, I know, it's deceiving this place. As much as I love it, there's a lot of rays, a lot of turtles and a lot of tiger sharks. And what about the, the stingrays? How many stingrays live here on the reef? Oh, there's hundreds. That's why the tiger sharks come in. Their, their main diet uh, is turtles and stingrays. <laughs> It's been 24 hours since Steve died here. Mm. What sort of emotions are you going through? Well, I just can't believe it. I, I mean, I heard it when I was out diving and I went for a dive straight after and I couldn't concentrate on what I was seeing or wanted to film because all the time I was thinking about poor Steve. You know, it's a, what a way to go. So where exactly did it, did it happen? Well, right behind us, just up in the shallows. We're in about two metres of water now. Just go another hundred metres and it's about a metre and a half. How will you remember him and what he contributed to wildlife? His attitude toward conservation grew on a lot of people. He did, he did a lot of good. Monique, right there on the Great Barrier Reef, certainly a beautiful place. You can see why mm. Steve was drawn to it. Well, he became a star in America well before he found fame in Australia. They loved his larrikin manner, his zest for life, and the fact, to use the American expression, he was the real deal. No wonder then Steve was a regular guest on NBC's Today Show. Matt Lauer is the host and joins us now from New York. Matt, how have Americans taken to the news and, and why do you reckon they took Steve Irwin into their hearts? Well, I think, David and Melissa, I think uh, Americans have been shocked by this just as people there in Australia and all other parts of the world have been shocked. I mean, I, I hope Australians realize that this has been, you know, the lead story on, on morning shows like this, and it's been on the front pages of papers for the last couple of days now, or the last 24 hours at least. I think we took to him. Um, in part, you have to realize that in some ways, Australians are still a bit exotic to us here in this country. And it was that accent and that enthusiasm he talked about in that piece you ran just before the one from the Great Barrier Reef. He had so much enthusiasm. He had that incredible accent that always catches our attention here in the United States. And he was the perfect combination of entertainer and educator. And I think that really worked for him here in this country. Matt, after that now infamous baby incident, Steve spoke to you to explain it to America. Did that change perceptions of him? Well, you know, it, it's funny. I was looking back at that interview this morning, Melissa, and, and trying to recall what he said to me at that time. Um, I think what it did was it maybe for a while lowered his profile in this country. There was the, the certainly the, 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 the reaction after the incident happened where a lot of people thought it was a foolish incident and it was unnecessary. Um, and in looking back at what he told me in that interview, and I, and I have to say, I had interviewed him many times before that, and when I saw him that particular morning, it was very clear to me that he was extremely disturbed by the fact that he was going to be perceived as careless and reckless in this country and in other places. But what he talked to me about that morning basically was he said, I'm a trained professional. I know exactly what I'm doing. Nothing could have happened and I would never endanger my children. And I think what's, what's sad and, and perhaps poignant this morning is that there is a tragic lesson in this and that is that wild animals don't watch your resume or they don't look at your resume. And, and so what happened to him with this stingray, um, when you look back at what that incident with the crocodile, I mean, you do have to look back and say that could have had a tragic ending. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think, 
you know, that perhaps it makes me go back and look at that interview in a different light right now. But I don't think people here stopped respecting him after that. They still thought he had done incredible things for conservation. Um, but I do think that it was, it was perhaps a, it was a blip on the radar, to use an expression we use here sometimes. Sure. It, it wasn't his best moments, but he'll be remembered for so many better moments. Yeah, sure will. Matt Layout, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. All right, and our condolences to all his fans and, of course, his family members there in Australia. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Well, coming up, your memories of Steve Irwin. Millions of emails have been flooding in. But next, Steve Irwin as he'll want to be remembered. They don't get quite as big as the ones on the coast. Bearded dragon, you can see why they're called a bearded dragon. They've got this little beard here, and when he gets all cantankerous, all cranky, or you've got a big mouth too. He opens up his mouth and shows this beard and that a sign of toughness. I am so tough. Stay away from me or I'm going to bite you. Ow. You bit me on the nose, you little brat. Well, kids in particular loved Steve Irwin, but the fact is we all did, and there is one reason. What Steve conveyed in real life is what you saw on screen as well. He was lovable and unstoppable. Take a look at this from his movie, Crocodile Hunter. She's been my best mate for 13 years, helping me catch hundreds of crocodiles and dealing with countless numbers of poachers and wildlife perpetrators. We shouldn't have any trouble giving these blokes the slip. If we can fool them into thinking that we've still got the croc in the boat, then we can lead them away from here on a wild goose chase. It's those same two blokes. Hundreds of miles of river, and they're on us again. Have a go at this, will you? Crikey. Hold steady, mate. Did you see that? Must be some sort of poacher wolf. Let me at him. This is getting very dangerous. Ah! Holy smokes! These blokes are serious. Let's get out of here, mate. they're doing what he absolutely loved. In a moment, your memories and our time to reflect. So many millions of emails have been travelling around the world and coming in in memory of Steve and people just wanting to express how they felt about him and this is just a sample of some that have been coming into us. Driving past Australia Zoo this morning with my crying five-year-old son I realised how much better the world would be if we could be half the person Steve mm. was. His passion for life and his dedication to what he believed in may will make him sorely miss. This one Steve was the first person I wanted to be like. He was my first hero. I don't think I ever cried when someone
someone died, but I did today. And how about crikey, mate? Give them heaps upstairs. <laughs> if you would like to express your condolences, you can by visiting the book online at yahoo7.com.au slash news. Well, the following words perhaps sum up the life of Steve Irwin. Brave, irrepressible and life-affirming. Steve Irwin will be remembered as a wonderful showman and a passionate conservationist, but most of all, he was a husband and a father. We'll leave you with these memories.